the ZWO flat field 130 millimeter quadruplet air spaced aprochromatic astrograph. Now that's a mouthful. How about the ZWO 130 APO for short? This is an incredible powerhouse of a telescope weighing in at just over 23 pounds and it comes with some really cool features. Let's take a closer look. Welcome back. We are looking at the ZWO 130 APO and we're going to go over some of the features that come standard on this really awesome telescope. So we're going to start up front and uh, it's got a really nice dew shield here um, and the dust cover that comes on it, it's, it's nice and tight. You got to use both hands to take it off. As you can see, it's really nice uh, red anodized, anodized aluminum. Um, it's uh, it works great. I, I haven't had to use a, um, a dew heater yet or any, anything like that, but um, so far this has been a great telescope, uh, easy to use. Um, but I really like the dew shield, and uh, it's uh, it's if you don't have it secured into a mount, you're gonna have to use two hands on it because it's it's nice and tight. But uh, you just loosen the neural knob on it and uh, and push it in. And there you go. You can fully rotate it. You can use it either way. Spin it around and see the front here. Sorry, I got a little bit of a small table here. But as you can see, there's the front. But uh, it extends, and um, you can use it either way, uh, uh, extended or not extended. But uh, this is how I currently use it. That's currently in the mode that I, I use it. But the finish is really nice, um, kind of an off flat white type finish. Uh, it's not um, it's not smooth. It's got just a little bit of grippiness to it, so you can get your hand around it uh, and grab a hold of it and not worry about dropping it. Um, so it won't slip out of your hand real easy. Um, the tube rings are anodized as well. Um, really nice. Um, comes with a nice carrying handle here. Um, again, sorry, I apologize for the small table here, but as you can see, uh, the tube rings are detachable, uh, nice neural knobs here. Uh, when you loosen these up, the tube will move, slide freely inside the tube rings without really any problems at all. And when you take it in and out of the case, you'll definitely have to adjust it a little bit because when this uh, dew shield comes back, if you don't have the spacing just right, um, the dew shield won't retract all the way, or you'll have it too far one way and it won't fit in the case. Uh, and we'll go over the case here in a little bit, but this is a perfect little setup right here. And um, you can mount extra gear to your tube rings, um, but I don't recommend doing it on this side. I recommend doing on the left side, on this side here. Uh, it won't interfere. If you mount anything over here, extra ASI air, or guide scope or whatever, um, uh, or any other type of mini PC, um, it won't interfere with anything over here. But if you put it on the right hand side, uh, it'll it will interfere with your tube rings. It could cause you some issues later. Um, I'm not happy with uh, with the handle setup. Um, ZWO has their own type, uh, and I know that uh, William Optics has their type. But uh, I'm really fond of the William Optics handle that they have because it comes with a, uh, a easy um, handle that you can just you can just slide your guide scope into. You don't have to. Um, you can just take your guide scope and slide it into the handle. I had to mount a finder shoe to this handle. I don't have the proper gear to mount it to this handle, um, and it's not just ready available on the website that you can see. Hey, give me a give me something that'll mount this here. So I just made this work. I put some regular standard uh, nuts and bolts in there to hold it together. Um, don't recommend doing that because it sticks out on the bottom as you can see right here and it catches my finger when I lift it up. But it works nonetheless and it works great. But uh, the overall finish, I, I say, is really nice. Um, let's move it down to the, the, the rest of the body of the telescope. The, this part 
is a really smooth black anodized and it's it's um it's not like this this has a nice a grippy finish this is a slick finish but it, it's it's a uh, nice and sturdy you can tell this well built um, it comes with uh, a selection to where you can put a finder shoe on this side or this side I chose to put it over here but uh, all you have to do is just move it over here and it says to reinstall these uh, screws here when not in use um, it comes with a dual speed 3.4 focuser uh, and when it comes out of the box it's got this covering um, handle here for the focuser but I don't use this that's what comes with the it comes with it but as you can see I've got the electronic focuser attached to it uh, that was really simple it was the easiest one I've had hooked up so far didn't have any issues with it at all um, it also has a 360 degree rotator built in so you just adjust the adjust the knob here on top and away you go you can frame up your pictures really nice um, the focuser has 130 millimeter uh, travel distance um, which is really nice because you can um, you can set a lot of gear up here and um, not have to worry about back focus and one of the things that this they claim on this particular scope is with the fully flat field you don't have to worry about calculating back focus now I didn't do that on the first test I just put the camera on here and I had a filter drawer on here and I went with it um, but I had to end up having the focuser uh, almost um, it goes up to a nine I had it on like an eight uh, to get it to focus um, so when I went back and I changed out cameras I did put in a, um, an adapter piece in here um, to extend it out a little bit, give me a little bit more back focus. You know, that standard 55 millimeter back focus, I would just go with that. You don't have to worry about that, but that's just what I do. I would go with that. Now, in this, in this package of scope, it comes uh, at the rotator um, M86, I believe it is, uh, and it can go all the way down to M48. All the adapters you need to go from M86 to M48 come in the box, uh, which is really nice. Uh, and that's what I've got here. Um, I've got it from M86 to M48. Uh, I had, this is the 2600 uh, mono camera. I had the 6200 hooked to here when I was doing testing initially. Um, and it's really nice because this, this telescope has a 60 millimeter imaging circle uh, and it accepts that full frame camera nicely and it performs outstandingly uh, very very nice um, it also has the ability well this is a uh, it comes out of the box at 1000 millimeters at a f 7.7 um, you can uh, purchase additionally optionally you can purchase their reducer this nice brand new out of the box you can purchase their reducer and it comes, it comes with a set of adapters as well. So not only does the compu uh, does the <laughs> computer, not only does the telescope come with a set of adapters, the reducer comes with it as well. So this will reduce uh, this telescope from 1,000 millimeter focal length to uh, 700 millimeter focal length, uh, and it will reduce it down from 7.7 .7 to a 5.4, I believe. So uh, quite a nice step down and quite a nice uh, speed up in light gathering capability. I haven't had a chance to use this yet, um, but, but I'm going to very soon as soon as we get some nice weather. And um, uh, I plan on testing it against my 11-inch RASA because uh, it's a you know, f2.2 at 600 millimeter focal, a 620 millimeter focal length. And I'm curious to see um, how well this performs at 5.4. But as it is right now, out of the box, performing at a thousand millimeters at 7.7, I'm blown away with with a one-shot color camera, and I'm tremendously blown away with the mono camera hooked to it. I did a, uh, I believe it was a five-minute test and a ten-minute test, I believe on the Eagle Nebula, which we'll show here in a little bit, and the Lagoon Nebula. It's just amazing, amazing of how much detail this thing can capture in that short amount of time and uh, 
and how precise the detail is. Um, no issue with the stars. It's it's completely flat, just as they as they claim. Uh, all my photos, and you'll see uh, all the test stuff. You'll see that the photos came out uh, extra crisp, even after processing and before processing. Everything was flat. Stars are nice and tight, round. Um, just overall, very very pleased. Um, at the time of purchase, this scope was two thousand nine hundred ninety nine U.S. dollars. Uh, I purchased this scope with my own funds um, and uh, doing this review on my own free will and uh, I can say what I want um, but I, I do have to make a disclaimer um, and I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that the wife isn't watching or listening um, but it did cost $2,999 however um, as my previous videos were about the Celestron Rasa we used some of her um, retirement funds to purchase this thing. We saw it at NEF uh, this past April and um, went up there and fell in love with it and I said I had to have it just as I saw the AM5 had to have it. So um, we, uh, when I say we, we used some of her retirement funds to um, purchase this setup here. So thank you very much, sweetie, and I love you. All right, back to business. Um, so we talked about the 60 millimeter imaging circle. We talked about the overall beautiful finish. It's got a lovely dew shield on it. It's 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 a tight fit, so it's really really nice. Hold on to the scope if it's in the mount. You don't have to worry about it, but if you have it on the table, hold on to it while you move it. And um, it uh, so far I'm very very pleased with it. Um, there was something else I was going to mention about this thing. But it'll come to me. Um, um, so, one of the big items I forgot to mention is is that um, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, just about everybody, you know, you're wanting that high quality glass that goes into a scope, um, and rightfully so. And I've read a couple of reports, and and maybe I got this wrong, but from what one report that I read, that up to a certain millimeter focal length. Um, it may be, it may be advantageous to have that uh, FLP 53 glass, or it might not. Um, there may not be that big of a difference, but I'm not 100% sure of that, and maybe I got that wrong. But what I can tell you is, is this has uh, four pieces of glass, um, two ED glasses, two two ED um, uh, pieces of glass, and they're up front. Um, I'm not sure exactly where they are spaced into here, um, but what I can tell you is that um, uh, this thing takes amazing quality pictures. They're very nice, very sharp, um, and I, I can't wait to get out there and image more. Um, we've had some horrible weather, but uh, thanks for staying with us, and if you stay a little bit longer, you'll get to see the images that we've uh, that we've taken the test images. All right, so here's the case that it comes in. Um, it's one of the sturdiest, most nice cases I've seen yet. Very nice, very nice uh, quality build here. Got some really good sturdy latches. Um, again, this is one of the best cases I've seen so far. It's very nice and padded, as you can see. And it comes with all of the filters, filters. And as you can see, it comes with all of the adapters that you need and a space for them. The M86 to 68, M54 to 48, and a 68 to 54 adapter. They're all, if you're not using them, they just uh, stay in here like this. It also comes with an eyepiece adapter. So you can look at it visually. That's one thing this uh, scope is, is, is good for, too, is you can use it visual. So you just undo these screws here, and then it becomes a 2-inch eyepiece adapter or one and a quarter eyepiece adapter. Of course, it comes with all the warranty products and all the cards with it as well. I know a lot of people are really interested in that, but um, uh, uh, it's it's... It comes with all the specs that you need, um, but it's just, it's, it's a really nice scope. Um, 
and it performs very well. Um, I can post that data later if you'd like to see it. Let me know in the comments. But, but again, there is the ZWO-130 APO. And it is a awesome telescope for the price and uh, for what you can see with it. Uh, it really reaches out um, and gets inside the galaxies and nebulae really, really good. Um, I thought a thousand millimeter focal length would, would not be, it would either be too short or too deep. Um, but it's for me, I like it. It's just perfect. It, it's working just perfect. So I um, uh, hope you enjoyed this video and hope you enjoy the uh, review pictures um, coming up here in just a second.